Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today we're going to be working on our 2006 Toyota 4Runner, and I want to show you how to do an oil change. If you need any parts, check us out, 1AAuto.com. Thanks. So now that we're under the hood, you can see where your oil fill is, right? Take off your cap. We'll take a look at it. It says specifically right on it what type of fluid to use. 5W30. Okay, that's what the manufacturer wants you to use. I think they know what they're doing. That's what I would use. Turn over your cap, make sure your seal's good. If it looks like it's swollen, or if it looks like it's dry and cracked, you'd want to replace your oil cap. This one looks good, we'll set it aside. I'm gonna put it right over here, on top of where my hood latch is, right here. So that way there, in case for some reason I forget to put my oil cap on, and I try to close my hood, bonk, 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 it's not gonna be able to close. I'm gonna say what's going on. Oh, Len, <laughs> silly guy. I'm gonna put it on there, right? Here's hoping I won't forget. You can clearly see where your oil filter is. Somebody drew a nice little picture on there for us. Um, squiggles, dots, and lines, I'm not really worried about that. Um, anytime I'm doing an oil change, it's always a great idea to check your fluids. You know, you're under here, why not? You've got your brake fluid master cylinder over here. This is the reservoir. So you just check your level, make sure it looks good. You can come over here, you have your coolant reservoir, okay? You can see your level very clearly through it. Awesome. Your washer fluid. You always want to make sure that that's topped off. Power steering fluid. And your air filter is located right under here. Lastly, your oil dipstick. Right there. Awesome. So we have our oil cap off. Next, what we're going to do, since we're up here, we're going to remove our oil filter. We're going to turn that counterclockwise. Not much swing room with the cover on here, but see if we can do it anyway. Somebody made sure that that was super tight. Maybe a gorilla or something. <clears throat> awesome. Okay, so when you take this off, uh, the hole's obviously facing down, so there could be some oil that comes out, and it's more than likely gonna go right inside this area right here. So, you know, if you have a clean rag or a dirty rag even, just something to collect that oil. This vehicle's been sitting for a while, so obviously the oil made its way down. I don't have very much of a mess. If I did have a mess, now would be a perfect time to clean it up. I'm gonna move this oil filter aside, grab a rag, I'm just gonna clean up the area. This base right here is right where the seal on the oil filter is gonna ride. You need to make sure that that's absolutely clean. You don't want any dirt or debris or anything like that on there. That's perfect. Let's grab our new oil filter, we'll move along. So generally speaking, you wanna fill up your oil filters to prime them, but where this filter is upside down, I'm not gonna bother filling it because I don't wanna waste any oil. But I do wanna definitely make sure that I have lubricant or oil going right around this seal right here, okay? That's gonna help make sure that this comes off easy when it comes time to do our next oil change. Thread that right on there. Okay. Once you have it bottomed out, you just want to go another three quarters of a turn. I usually just grab it and give it a couple extra little spins just like this. Awesome. Make sure I clean up my mess. I hate leaving a mess around. Definitely don't want to contaminate the environment. All right, let's get underneath the vehicle. So we're underneath the vehicle and you can see right up through the center of the skid plate, they made a nice hole for you and you can remove your drain plug. You're gonna to wanna to wear hand protection, eye protection, and of course have a catch bucket to catch any of the oil that's gonna come down. I'm gonna use my 14 millimeter socket and a ratchet. You can use whatever you want, but the size of the drain plug is a 14. Here we go, this is gonna come down and it could splash, so you wanna make sure you watch your face and your eyes. We'll let that finish draining, we can move along. Um, so we have our drain plug and we have the gasket that's on there. You're gonna to wanna to replace that gasket. We saw that, and here it is right here. So we're just gonna make sure we take off this drain plug gasket, set that aside to recycle. Uh, we're gonna spray this down with a little bit of parts cleaner. I forgot to mention, but obviously we still have our gloved hand and safety glasses. So that's super important, especially when you're using chemicals. So we're just gonna make sure that we clean off our drain plug here. A lot of times what happens is, is the, uh, the gasket 
We'll just kind of leave some of its remnants there. Kind of like a, you know, Len was here type of thing. Um, so just clean that up the best you can so you have a nice smooth surface for your new gasket to ride on. Hit it with some more parts cleaner. So we scrape that off the best we could there. Spray it down. Looks pretty decent. We've got our brand new quality 1A Auto gasket. Slide that on there. I'm gonna wipe down our oil pan right here. You wanna make sure that you don't have any gaskets stuck up on there. Okay, that looks like it's good. Take our drain plug, put it in there just like that. Take our 14 millimeter socket with ratchet and bottom it out and just give it a little tweak and that's it. Wipe it down. You wanna make sure you don't have any oil dripping down. Okay friends, so we have our 530 oil. Um, for this application, it requires five and a half quarts of 5W30. So we grabbed ourselves a nice big five gallon pail and we also have this extra little quart here. So we're just gonna take a look. You can see the half quart mark right there. So as I add, I'm just gonna keep stopping and see if I can get it as close to this half quart as possible. It's like we're way up here. We're gonna keep going. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe a scotch over, but that's fine. I'm gonna set that aside. Now I can continue with my nice big quart, or I guess five quart jug. So we're just gonna try to get out as much of this as possible. Of course, we can sit here for a while and wait for oil to keep coming out. Looks like we're coming to a drip here. I'd say that that's decent. Set this aside. Get our funnel out of here. Hey, I remembered. Put our oil cap on, make sure it's nice and snug. Okay, so now we need to start the vehicle. Okay, let's get this puppy started. All right. See, that's decent enough. So we're on a nice level surface now. We just finished starting the vehicle. We're gonna lift up our dipstick, wipe it off, insert it back into the dipstick tube, give it one second, pull it back up. We're gonna take a peek. You have your low dot way down here and your full dot right up there. That looks pretty good. Just wipe it real quick. You'll notice the low dot at the bottom and the full dot right here that's gonna be approximately one quart of oil between there and there. So if you're all the way down at this uh, low dot right there, I would add by maybe a half a quart or three quarters of a quart and try to get it just under that maximum dot there, okay? Anywhere below that maximum and above the minimum, you're doing all right, but have it just below that maximum. If you happen to have added oil and you added too much and you notice it's coming up the dipstick, boop, 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 someplace up here or even right here, that's actually really bad for your engine. You're just gonna wanna get back under there and drain out a little bit till it comes just below that maximum. With that said, I'm just gonna reinstall our dipstick, make sure it's all the way down, double check all of our caps and covers, anything that we may have tried to open up, check our fluids. We know we tightened our oil filter, we've got our oil cap on. I'd say that looks pretty great. Close the hood, down the road you go. Okay, so to reset the maintenance light, we're just gonna turn the key to the on position you wanna make sure that your odometer is on the regular odometer field. So if you have it on trip A or you have it on trip B, this is not gonna work. Press it one more time if you're on B, it's gonna bring you to the main odometer field. Turn your key off, press and hold your trip button, and then you're gonna watch right down here. I'll do it like this. You're gonna watch for the maintenance and you're also gonna watch right inside the odometer field for some dashes. It's gonna start counting down. Ready? Turn the key. Right, it's blinking over here. So that looks like it worked perfectly. On some Toyotas, it does a little dash right up here and it'll be like five dashes, four dashes, three dashes. So, you know, um, maybe like a Toyota Corolla or a Camry or something like that. You'll have the dashes. This one over here, it just blinks the maintenance light. The maintenance light, maintenance light went out. Looks like it's good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.